I think the initial goal of Project Two Dime was to prove for the first time in human history the factual existence of supernatural life. Me and my partner Jared dealt in the very physical aspects of this delicate process. I remember it was in the early months of 2014 we received word from a woman in Berkshire County, Massachusetts, who had um, apparently experienced on more than one occasion some disturbing events centering out her home. She invited us to spend a night there and see what we could see. Once we got settled, I phoned a delivery man who had apparently had an experience at the house the previous year. We talked and he agreed to do an interview. So what follows is his retelling of the events linking him to the home. Yeah, I pulled up to the house. It was about nine at night. I got out of the van and grabbed my dolly. It must have only taken me Two minutes max to get the box secured on the dolly. When I turned around, the front door was open. I admit I thought that was a tad odd, uh, that the homeowner hadn't come out to give me a hand. Of course, I was used to that sort of thing, being delivery man and all. So I went up the stone path to the house, dragging the dolly with me. I got to the door and stepped in, pulled the dolly over the door jam. The house was nice, the owners must have been well off. Of course, I'd seen plenty of fancy places. Uh, my job, so I didn't pay much attention. I unstrapped the box and started lugging it to the corner of the room. It looked to be a decent place for it. As I reached my destination, I heard the quite familiar sounds of my dolly's wheels squeaking across the floor. I turned very slowly. My dolly had moved about three feet towards me. Well, that certainly gave me a fright, although I convinced myself, what the heck? It was an old house, the floors were probably anything but level. I got the box situated and stood to leave as I turned to face the door again. My dolly flew at me, the wheels making the most terrifying screeching noise. Before I could react, it struck my legs and just above the knee, uh, there was blood. I screamed and ran as best I could from the house. Once in the yard, I dialed 911. They didn't believe me when I told them what had happened. Said it was a hallucination brought on as an after-effect of blood loss. Once I got just hard from the hospital, my first delivery was to the exact same house. I quit my job. By the time we finished with the interview, it was going on 8 p.m. Um, me and Jared took some sleeping bags and headed over to the older and unoccupied side of the house, um, the place where John had experienced the strange events leading up to his injury. After setting up a home base of sorts in the kitchen, we considered erecting a camera and night vision light, um, but soon decided against it after realizing the extensive amount of well-equipped security cameras positioned around our location. What follows is not only our own footage, but also that of one of the many CCTV cameras in our vicinity. Um, this is the unaltered and genuine footage from that night. Man, you think it slipped? Hell no. This way, this way. Hello? Yeah! Moments later, I came out of my panic and called the ambulance. I was held in custody for three days on the charge of expected assault on Jared. However, I was soon released due to the fact that I could not be proven guilty of the crime. As I was driving to the hospital, I received a phone call. Jared had died of a concussion. 
The purpose of this documentary was to stress upon the fact that these lost souls are everywhere, in every residential area, in every home, and to make clear the horrible facts that everything you just witnessed could happen to you. Never look away. Never think you're safe. And never drop your guard. Because they're coming. And they're not afraid of you.